Alexander Technique and Aikido with Mastone. Today's session is going to focus on how we can undo excess tension generally and also specifically creating more movement in the T-spine, the thoracic spine, and how this relates to our awareness of the timing with which we move through daily activities and also a good useful study for singers and people who want to improve their, the way they access their vocal potential. So, let's get started. And the only thing you need for this lesson is the floor and uh, something for under your head, but we won't be using that all the time. Okay, so. Get yourself set up and join me back in one second. Okay, welcome back. We're going to start in the semi-supine position on the floor. And uh, initially have your legs long. I have this under my head uh, just so that I just get a little bit of support under my head. It's actually... Th that's about good. We won't use the support under the head for too long. For, not for all of the lesson. So, begin to become curious. Just about the most basic thing. It's about the movement of your breathing. And also the focus or the expansive focus of your eyes and just looking straight ahead above you noticing where your arms are noticing how you're making contact with the floor and bring to bring your legs to standing and uh, working on understanding that we are a connected whole. So if you're looking to improve the sense of your lower back, if you've been sitting at the desk for too long, or if you feel like you have a rounded shoulder, rounded uh, mid-spine, and want to improve the mobility there, we're looking to understand the timing relationship between how we do daily actions and how we incorporate support throughout our mechanism, organism, however you want to call it, throughout our whole self. So, depending on what you've been doing today, you might have been sitting for a while. So we're just going to start by noticing how our sacrum is making contact with the floor. So I had a video uploading right now. So it should be up pretty soon on undoing rounded upper back part one where we do some standing work to become aware of our postural habits. And so one, we become aware that our timing matters to how we improve our movement sense and our understanding of how to move with the appropriate amount of tension and relaxation. It also becomes very apparent that we are a connected being, that it could be that no amount of foam rolling to one section of our body alone is going to improve that movement. So noticing where the sacrum is and just doing very, very small knee arcs.
So we have this amazing ability as humans to be able to learn and also learn to draw attention to more than one thing at a time. It's true that we can take in or learn one new set of information at a time, but see if you can expand your awareness so that you're noticing your breathing, you're noticing the soft focus of your eyes, or just noticing what's going on with your vision. Noticing how your sacrum is contacting the ground and also how this very, very simple knee arcs relate to the bones from the knee to the floor and also the bones and joints from the knee up through your pelvis. Everything back to center. Now we're going to do another continuation of the study of the relationship between the, the sacrum and the floor. So in the video I was mentioning before, I will tag below, there is the eight directional movement that is in Aikido where we step forward, backwards, left, right, and on the diagonal. So together they make eight. It's referred to as Hapu Ondo. And now we're going to do that by imagining that uh, we have a pretty steady sacrum on the floor and that we're going to move the pelvis so that we go in first in two directions, then we'll add the left and right direction and then we add the diagonals but then understanding that we're going to always take our time and pass through the middle or the neutral whatever is neutral for us right now that is something that will continually refine itself as we learn so you can have your arms by your side, palms up, palms down. It's the very subtle movement so that we can continue to notice our movement of our ribs, just how we're breathing. No rush here, just really taking your time. It's, uh, it's as if it was a movement meditation so that you are really allowing your whole system to tune in to what it is that you need to do and slowly finding out what it is that you don't need and maybe that will just leave <laughs> okay so the just like uh, you get that sacrum point there yep that's on the floor don't have to push it there the understanding is that you are not forcing, you're not using willfulness to unravel thoracic roundedness or improving hip pain, getting you know, getting rid of hip pain. You're not using willfulness, you're just listening, playing, and now working with the timing of your movements. So here we go, we're going to Notice where the sacrum lies and then move towards the chest. And just tilting the movements towards the chest, tilting the pelvis towards the chest. And then you're going to come back towards the center. So it's that aspect that we're not in a rush because we're studying our timing, so it'd be silly to be in a rush. And then we'll tilting your pelvis towards the Towards the feet. And the feet are just so, they're just placed on the floor. No need to push and no need to pull. And then coming back to what your sense of <coughs> excuse me, center is. Yeah. Simple so far. 
and then we're going to find that center and just move towards the right and then you come back to center you move towards your left please don't try to do it correctly because as the old man said to do it correctly is to do it in a way that you know how to do and if you want to improve on what you know wouldn't it make sense to just sort of take our time Okay, and now I'm co I've come to center and I'm going to go in the middle right diagonal and I'm not in no rush. Please go slowly. Come back to the center and you can go in the lower left diagonal. My feet are really easy. There's hardly any movement that I can I'm not making movement in my knees. If my knees move, it's because of the relational aspect of the pelvis. I'm not making my knee move. I'm just saying, oh, okay, oh, better come back to the middle. Yeah, so it feels very different if I allow myself to come back to the center. I can feel it, I can feel the weight between, you know, a sacrum, middle of the sacrum is on the floor. It's a very, very concrete understanding. Okay, well, that's middle. And if I'm there, I'm to the left. So just find what's middle for you right now. And then we've got the two diagonals, upper left. And then we come back to center again. And then this is a tricky one for me for whatever reason. Oh, okay, there it is. Lower right. And so there's a, a simple and easy, easy, easy. Don't try to be willful about it. And if some one of the diagonals feels foreign to you, don't try to force it and don't try to be fixated on getting it right. Just going up towards the chest. And now you're going to go down towards the feet. Don't be in a rush, please. Because you get your breathing and your s visual sense to also be involved in. So you're not falling on the floor, you're engaged with the floor. You're using it to help you study the timing of your organization, of your movement. Come back, back to the center and then trying the diagonals. I'm going to go to lower right first. Oh, there it is. And I'm going to take my time to pass through center to go through upper left. And I don't want to rush. back to the center. Maybe just do nothing for a moment. It's time to do nothing. Because I still got my breathing and my vision to be in tune with, as it were. movement as simple as possible. So if you like you can stop the video now and just work with that one aspect. Actually two things. There's the, the knee arcs, 
Noticing your eyes, noticing your breathing while you're doing that. Very, very small range. You don't have to go all the way. And then there's the the eight directions of the movement around the steady sacrum. Your sacrum moves as you're doing this, but you're keeping in time with allowing it to hmm, center itself before you move it again. Okay, so you can take a break now and come and won't go anywhere. Just YouTube. Okay. So if you want, you can keep going. And now we're going to slide both feet just to sense how we are with the floor. I'm going to remove this. And depending on the capacity of your upper back, and if you sense that you're not in a position where your head is pulling your neck behind the rest of your spine, then you can probably just not have the head support for a moment. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring both feet back and make a little adjustment so that I have the, the sense that I have the longest space possible between that, that sacrum and the very base, the very, just the base of where the ribs, middle of the ribs. And what we're going to do now is try to see what happens if we unweigh the sacrum. But, obviously one way I could do this is push onto the floor. But I'm studying my timing and stu studying the timing of the way I stumble on words but also studying the timing of my awareness and my direction. So obviously I'm lying on the floor, my feet are in that direction, my head, one arm's here, one arm's there. So the basics, you know. It's very important to keep a concrete understanding, starting with a concrete understanding. So, I'm going to notice that the, my direction as I give myself the message of lifting my pelvis into a bridge. And I'm going to just notice what happens in my hip, whether, my, whether, I, whether things narrow or whether I can just do nothing yet. Because I want to study the, the timing of my thoughts and the timing of my movement to close the gap between what's habitual and what can be more and more and more and more and more constructive. So it's that constructive uh, ideal that I want to build towards. Having said that, that constructive ideal has a lot to do with what I don't need. So Got my feet here and I'm just finding out what I don't need to allow the direction of my spine to be informed by my awareness. So I'm thinking up along the spine, I'm not doing anything, I'm not turning on the glutes. No, I'm not doing that. Because I want that to be in timed with my flexors and my extensors and up along my spine. That's what I want to study. So if I just turn on my glutes, I just go, okay, that's what I know, okay, turn on the glutes. And then as a result, I'm just improving on my back pain and my rotation. What I want to do is find out how I can time things more constructively by using my awareness. So I'm just going to give myself a verbal idea, a very clear well, verbal idea. 
in the form of an inquiry. So I'm just thinking, oh, would it be possible for me to do nothing with my musculature? Yeah, it actually is to a certain degree, other than being alive there was, does my breathing is working for me? And would it be possible for me to do something with my mind, with my thinking, so that I'm thinking in an upward direction along my whole spine, so from the sacrum through the lower back, middle back, all the way up. There's not a fixity or rigidity, it's simply a mental, verbal inquiry. I'm saying, yeah, I could probably do that. I could probably think up along my spine with my mind. And I'm just going to allow that thought to be the first primary action. And then I'm going to allow that thought to inform my spine how it can basically do what it needs to do. Not too much pushing into the floor and not too much pushing through the gluteals and allow my pelvis to come into a bridge position. And I continue to unravel what it is that I need, what it is that I don't need with this position. And then I'm thinking up along my spine to lower my pelvis. And let's do that again. So we're starting with the primary thought. It's an inquiry. Is it possible to me for me to do nothing on the first first impetus or first idea of lifting the pelvis? Yeah, actually. And can I also think up along my spine while I do that? Oh yeah. Okay. And now I'm going to allow that thought to make me aware of my interconnectedness and how I can allow the thought to inform what I need to do to unweigh the pelvis to whatever degree. Now you can just lift the pelvis uh, a centimeter, two centimeters, this is not a big lift. And I'm going to continue to think up along my spine to return my spine and pelvis to the ground. Okay, so that's the basic premise. And now I ask you to, if you want, you can stop again and just work on that part today. Because it's a, it doesn't seem like a lot, but once you realize that you can ask yourself to improve your awareness potential, then the movement becomes very playful and it actually, well, yeah, just have a play with it and see what you notice when you time your awareness with the movement, rather than just doing the movement and finding out that after the Pilates or the yoga that you did, you were using too much uh, of the parts of your musculature that's habitually working too hard anyway. So we just want to bring more balance. We don't want to not use muscle. That's, that's so not true. We want to use ourselves, but we want to use ourselves constructively. So we're going to continue with the same idea and there is a lot of rotation in Aikido. Actually, um, it's all about the centrifugal center pedal forces and how we redirect our partner's movement 
and find an unhabitual um, it's like a very counterintuitive way of finding our power and so noticing the sacrum I've put myself in this slightly asymmetrical position because life might find us there and what I'm going to do is the same thing before but just with one hip so this leg is long just listening and my arms can be by my side around here palms up, palms down, doesn't really matter but what I want to study is this spiral rotation and how I can allow it to work with the rest of my body so the allowing is the awareness and the body is obviously body so I'm going to find a way to think up along my spine in such a way that I'm aware of my breathing and I'm aware of my eyes and just unweighing my right pelvis so just want to use this idea of restriction constructive restriction restrictive construction <laughs> so if if my partner in Aikido is is giving me some intention or pressure in this direction then my hand is best connected somehow to my center remember the sacrum? yeah okay so I'm going to use that here to study my timing so what I going to do, I'm going to hold my hand, palm on the back of the hand here and then just just the hold like that, yeah? doesn't have to be firm and I've raised my hands up towards the ceiling and I'm just applying a tiny bit of pressure down from this hand onto this whole arm, sort of towards the floor and so when I find my direction, I'm just going to simply think up along the spine. So that's my sacrum to the space between my ears. And rotate my pelvis onto the top of the femur to see if I can move my shoulder on the opposite side. So I'm working on a diagonal. I know, it's shocking. Alexander Technique and Diagonals. But it's Alexander Technique and Aikido. So I'm thinking up along the spine. These things aren't fixed. They're not fixed definitions. Right? It's, uh, it's based on principle of being able to have this very primary activity of awareness informing the timing of our movement so that we are more and more aware that the changes we want to make such as the golfer who wants to keep his eyes on the ball is something that he has to learn to do by finding out how he is a relational being, that his eyes are not, and the, the, the way his use of his eyes are related to the use of his whole self. And so I'm putting some pressure in here just to find that, that when I'm coming in through, so this is why, is that when I'm rotating in through here, I don't want to shear across my lower back because that would be very easy to do. That wasn't quite it, but you can very easily just shorten yourself saying, yeah, I did the movement. But we're studying the timing with which we can, now you can just, after having had that um, input, you can just have your arms on your side, noticing the diagonal, and then you can find out how you can keep your knee 
almost where it is. The knee doesn't go in, doesn't go out. You're giving yourself a, a point to warp around. So it's as if there was a rotation that was coming into right into this shoulder. Not so much shearing across the lower back. I think I personally do enough of that in, in real life. <laughs> in life. So that I'm, 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 I'm doing it. Um, yeah. So we can bring awareness that we can move relationally. And that, that thought of being aware of our whole spine in movement is not a rigid position, but it's a matter of noticing our direction. And then we can go a little bit faster. I'm going to put the foot a little bit further out. You can experiment with how you find your diagonal. I'm going to put it further in. Okay, so we're just going to do it on one that, that side. I hope you don't mind being lopsided right now. Just taking a little rest. And the reason I take a little rest is that's what we do on Aikido. We take, just when I think I'm getting something, then the clap comes. And there's nothing nicer than that because it's a brilliant way to not go for a fixed end, a fixed idea. It, uh, it's, I really value the, the breaks and the learning in the dojo. It's one of the most uh, amazing thing about Aikido is the fact that we stop in learning and refine our awareness in learning. Okay, so coming back to the next exploration of timing is I'm just going to bring this whole leg just onto tippy toes or just bring it off the floor. Oh boy, and I'm studying the, <laughs> the timing of what happens when I do that is you ask yourself the question and I'll ask myself the question am I shortening in the lumbar spine or can I allow uh, the appropriate sort of relationship that, that biomechanically would be most constructive to the ease of movement. So we're finding ease of movement, but first we got to know what we're doing. It's ease of movement isn't something that we, we are told, hey, do that. No, it doesn't work like that. So we're exploring and noticing what happens from side to side. So for example, I noticed that when I lift this side, that shoulder, doesn't matter where I put my arm, is really kind of coming in as if it was going to help. It's like, but there's going to be a diagonal pull, but I'm just wondering how that relates to the habitual position of my balance of my head and also the scoliosis, the, the small scoliosis, small or maybe not so small depending on who you ask, scoliosis of my spine because I don't want to chiropractor it, I don't want to pressure it, I don't I've done that before and it's not very nice I've, I'm, a, I'm a very curious person and I've uh, delved into all the related remedial modalities out there just to know and uh, well you can decide for yourself okay so I'm weighing each leg at a time. Finding out the timing, and I'm still just timing this around a solid sacrum. So your sacrum is not pushed, please don't be willful. Just wondering how I can be centered to lift this leg so that I can find a, an upward flow of the leg off the ground and it's a funny thing the more we learn and the more we find 
more things that we have to learn. There's also an aspect of the movement that gets easier. So I remember looking at Surprise a few years ago at one of my instructors and saying, oh, this Ikkyo, it's just very easy. And they're like, yeah, if you do it correctly, <laughs> it's very easy. <laughs> okay. And you end up moving your partner no matter how big or stiff or powerful they are uh, quite easily because you spend the time to study the timing and studying the awareness. So I'm spending the time as I start to unweigh this leg. I'm just, not willfully, but constructively, I'm thinking up along my spine and I'm finding out that in order to use the diagonal relationship here for support, I can actually use my awareness of contact and I can actually come back to the idea that I don't have to do anything willfully. No, because I'm studying the timing. Coming back to resetting my center on that side again. Because I know that I tend to habitually hold my head towards the left shoulder. And there's, there's no accident why I put the camera on this side because it's habitual. So what would happen if I just take a moment to refine that, not forcing it and not trying to set it right or wrong just refining my idea of thinking up along the whole spine and continuing to think up just to understand what I need to do in the back of my body not just shortening the front this is not just core this is not just three sets of muscles this is everything and what I need to do to allow it to, not plopping it back down, to allow it to reach the floor again. Okay, so we're going to go back to the previous study of two legs and the bridging. We're going to incorporate the understanding we found from the previous studies that we've done and now we're going to have that awareness of our support and the upward thought along the spine and we're going to allow a cooperation between the pelvis and the chest not, not really pushing down into the floor with my feet and so that I'm not going on to the neck either. So I got get here. What I'm going to do is actually undo any unnecessary gluteal holding to inform the quadrupeds and the hamstrings equally. So it's like a little pattern that I keep coming back to refining what I need in my whole awareness to stay here and then I'm going to do a little walking on the as if I was walking in the back of the shoulders but make it really easy so it's like a little figure eight and so it's moving around steady sacrum the idea right so the sacrum is going to move as your ilium on the left and then the ilium on the right move in a walking motion and then you're going to bring your feet into it so you're going to toe up and heel and 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 yeah, I need to 
use lovely, lovely layers of awareness and musculature to do that. And we're going to do it again, lighter and lighter each time. So it's our awareness of a whole contact, the timing of that, and you're just going to continue with that awareness. I don't want to tuck under too much. I don't like that instruction right now. If that's what you use for your Pilates, that's okay. But I'm using my awareness to think up along the spine to allow a rotational relationship. It's very useful. Once you find it, it's very powerful because it informs the whole thing everywhere. And then we're going to just do the toes and heels all together. Toes and heels. And then toe heel. Toe heel. Get an idea. Toe heel. Toe heel. And then down again. And we're going to go back to finding that diagonal movement. Keep your knee as much as possible, almost where it is. It's not coming into the body. And if you want to keep it there, let's try it there. It's easy to find that diagonal relationship. Also try it further out here. Almost to a position where you can touch it with your heel, but we're not going to do that. And you're going to just find that spiral coming across the front and back of the body to here. And finding out the timing with which we can roll. It's actually very useful if you're receiving in Aikido to find the timing so that your partner can work with you and you can work with your partner in such a way that no one gets injured and you get to find out how you can continue to develop your technique. So, um, allowing the thinking awareness to inform how I come more and more to land on this shoulder. So this is as if I'm going to receive Ikkyo. I want to make sure I land safely on big connections here. I don't want to land on the edge here. Oh no! That's how you get a broken clavicle. That's no good. Broken clavicle. So you want to see how you can time that so it goes all the way through here. So that you can time it and it goes all the way through there. And as you go back, it's as if you were unwinding back there. Let me take a little dojo break. Just finding out what that informed us of. All this talk about listening to the timing of our awareness of our central structure. You know, we're available to our core. You know, that's where we start from. It's not something that we have to manipulate. You know, it's something that we become aware of the timing of. So willfulness is an interesting thing I'm going to put on the comments. Uh, not on the comments, on the information about this video. The sections from Alexander's writing that inspired the video. And you'll see this a very interesting comment about willfulness. We don't want habitual willfulness when we're trying to unravel our understanding of how we can move easier. 
And so we're coming back to the rotation, and this time we're going back to, remember this, holding with this arm here, so we're pressing down a tiny bit, but I'm wondering if we can find the timing where the whole chest, it's like the chest is getting more flexible, and the chest is finding a way to turn around the arm. It's like a... All of Aikido is turning around a steady center. So I'm thinking of this hand, this whole arm, as connected to a steady, excuse me, <laughs> steady <laughs> center, and that I'm rotating the center around the out outer part, the parts away from me. So try and see what you get, so that this knee is not traveling out. That's shearing, just shearing your ring that you get some movement there. But in order to become more articulate and to study the timing and becoming aware of just the, the doing nothing, of just thinking, Just thinking up along my spine, just using my linguistic capacity and then bringing that into movement so that it's as if my shoulder blade was rotating around the arm. Because all day long those two things are kind of like fixed into one thing. And it's as if my pelvis was rotating around the head of the femur. And it's as if my whole spine was rotating around my eyes. And I study the timing of how I can come to be on one shoulder and from there just come to sitting oh. okay I feel very well rested after that so work with your timing I'd love to hear about your study your learning and see you in the next video.